All right. So good morning, everybody. I guess it's uh, start to time. It's start. It's time to start our webinar on possible research opportunities in the Karlsruhe School of Optics and Photonics. My name is Uli Lemmer. I'm the scientific spokesperson coordinator of this graduate school, and it's my pleasure this morning to discuss with you a little bit uh, our structure and uh, the opportunities that we can offer. And maybe just to start and to get going here, maybe you can um, just uh, confirm that uh, you can hear me. And maybe you can also just um, write down uh, where you are currently listening to us and where you are from. Okay, so that uh, seems to work. So it's great to be with you this morning here. And um, I guess I then should indeed start and uh, discuss with you a little bit um, our, our city, our university, our institution, and also more specifically the structure of our graduate school and uh, the PhD program uh, that uh, we are offering and uh, the current uh, job opportunities uh, that we have and the procedure that we are foreseeing uh, to fill the current uh, PhD openings that we have. Having that said, I would like to move uh, to, uh, to an introduction of maybe Germany as a whole and, and a little bit on the, the structure that we have in research and education in Germany and what the specific role of KIT is and, and why KIT is so special. Um, let me start with uh, Germany as a whole. Uh, you probably all know that uh, Germany is um, a very internationally oriented country, uh, which means um, that uh, we are basically a country that lives uh, from exporting high-tech uh, goods uh, to all over the world. Um, we are a country that is very uh, research and development uh, uh, intensive. Uh, that can be seen in our car industry, but that is also true for our um, uh, equipment industry. That is also true for the materials and uh, chemicals industry. Um, there are uh, elect there is electronics and optoelectronics industry. There is uh, optics instrumentation, etc. And uh, when it comes to optics and photonics, if you think about uh, the specific um, part of uh, science and technology, uh, you are probably aware that optics and photonics is basically in everything uh, that we are dealing with in the high tech uh, economy. Uh, be it uh, on the side of information processing, be it on the energy side, uh, but also be it in um, the future of uh, the automobile industry. There is more and more optical sending in, the, in modern cars. Uh, there is a whole lot of uh, photonic aspects uh, in renewable energy, especially when it comes to photovoltaics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, Probably we can dare to say that Germany is active in all these fields, uh, which are very important uh, for our century, for the 21st century. Okay, with that, uh, a little bit on KIT. Katsu Institute of uh, Technology is a little special in the sense that, is, um, that it uh, was uh, uh, merged from a former technical university and the former national laboratory. Uh, KIT is fairly large, as you can see here. Uh, I guess this is a pointer. Uh, we uh, have uh, about 25,000 students, and in the German systems, typically, we only consider students uh, those uh, persons uh, uh, up to the master's level, and uh, typically a PhD student would not be considered to be a student, but uh, rather a researcher or a doctoral researcher or an employee. Uh, so in that sense, uh, we have uh, more than 25,000 uh, students on the bachelor's and the master's level, and then we have another more than 3,000 um, doctoral researchers uh, that you would uh, call PhD students on an international level. We are also fairly international uh, in terms of the scientists uh, who are working uh, at KIT. Overall, KIT has, um, I guess, uh, 9,000 uh, employees. And among those 9,000 employees, 
one third are PhD students and the others are staff members, uh, postdoctoral researchers, and of course, uh, technicians, engineers, and administrative personnel. And among those scientists, uh, those um, additional 6,000, we have another 1,000 uh, who have an international background. Uh, our budget uh, is uh, on the order of uh, 1 billion, meanwhile, 1 billion euro. And that is uh, the typical mixture that you have um, uh, probably all over the world uh, for research intensive uh, universities uh, that there is uh, state funding that there is federal funding and that there is uh, quite a bit of uh, third party funding uh, in the sense that there is money from industry or from the uh, research institutions like uh, the national science foundation which is a, a dfg german science foundation in germany Why should you go to Karlsruhe? Why should you join KIT? There are many, many good reasons uh, when you look at the science and the technologies and the opportunities. Um, but um, I'm also very happy to live here in Karlsruhe. And uh, this is just one picture here showing our campus. Our campus is actually over there. Uh, I'm currently sitting somewhere in this building that you see over there. Uh, the international department, uh, which is running a uh, cultural school of optics and photonics and um, my colleagues Miriam and Denis are uh, joining here, uh, sitting in the KSOP office, uh, which is in this building here. And this is actually the, the border to the inner part of the city of Karlsruhe. So basically, if you go um, another 100, 200 meters here, you would end up uh, at the um, marketplace of uh, Karlsruhe and you would be right in the center of Karlsruhe. You have a fairly nice castle that you can see here. Uh, and um, then there is a large park here. And at the other side, and that's about uh, six miles away, uh, 10 kilometers away, uh, this is where the National Laboratory part of KIT is located, uh, where uh, some of the bigger infrastructure uh, is located, for example, an in, uh, a synchrotron and um, quite a bit uh, of the electron uh, microscopy. KIT is part of the Helmholtz Association, and I already mentioned uh, the term National Laboratory, and the Helmholtz Association is basically another word for the National Laboratory in Germany. Um, you're probably familiar with uh, the National Laboratory systems in general. The idea is uh, that you bundle uh, the long-term oriented uh, research in those national laboratories. Many of those national laboratories um, have a history in uh, nuclear research, and that is also uh, the case um, uh, for uh, KIT. The national laboratory part uh, contributed a lot to um, the development of nuclear power uh, from the 50s to the 90s. But then after Germany decided to get out of nuclear energy, uh, that research center was uh, basically completely um, converted uh, into a micro nano biotechnology research center covering many different aspects of long term research. And the idea is basically that the federal government uh, places uh, research projects there to secure the technology development uh, in the uh, longer term uh, future. Uh, KIT is a part of that. There are other um, national laboratories um, uh, which are spread around uh, Germany. There is, for example, the DESI, which is a German uh, electron synchrotron, which is the biggest uh, uh, accelerator facility in Germany, which is located in Hamburg. Uh, there is a big uh, research facility of the Helmholtz Association in Berlin. There is Jülich, uh, etc. So there are many more. Uh, locations uh, for the National Laboratory. But even KIT as one uh, institute in this uh, Helmholtz Association system uh, has uh, offices and also research facilities which are not uh, located in Karlsruhe, as you can see here. Uh, we have um, activities uh, in the Bavarian Alps, and, and that is uh, basically a part of our climate uh, research uh, that we are doing. We are doing battery research um, in a city called Ulm. Uh, we are collaborating uh, with the Helmholtz Center in Dresden, and uh, we also have a, um, a geological laboratory in Schiltach. KIT is going international. Uh, we ha have opened 
an office uh, in China. And actually, I think we meanwhile have two offices in China. Of course, uh, we have an office in Brussels. Uh, and uh, there is also a long-standing collaboration uh, with the uh, Russian Academy of Science, and therefore there is an office in Moscow. Karlsruhe is located here, and that means uh, we are located uh, next to the border to France. So Karlsruhe itself as a city is located in the Rhine Valley. The Rhine Valley uh, is uh, all the way from, from Switzerland um, uh, to the North Sea, uh, and uh, Karlsruhe is in that sense uh, at the very western end uh, of Germany, but Karlsruhe is basically in the center of a high technology region and um, you might call it the powerhouse of economy in Germany. Uh, if you go a little bit to the east, uh, you end up in Stuttgart, and St Stuttgart is um, the automotive valley of the world, as I sometimes call it. Uh, it's uh, where Daimler is uh, the headquarter, it's where the headquarter of Porsche is, it's where the headquarter of Bosch is, uh, so there is a lot of uh, the automotive engineering uh, industry uh, which is located and we have many ties um, to those companies. Uh, there is one company that is uh, particularly close uh, to us, uh, not only in terms of the distance, but also in terms of the collaborations, and this is BASF, which is the largest uh, chemically, chemical company in the world. And there are other uh, companies around. John Deere is uh, the he uh, European headquarter of the uh, US agriculture machine manufacturer. Uh, there are uh, companies uh, which are very local here. And this is, uh, for example, Polytech and PI. Uh, Polytech uh, is indeed one of uh, our direct sponsors. Uh, they are working uh, on all kinds of uh, optical metrological systems, optical instrumentation. And I particularly should also mention Zeiss uh, as a company that you know maybe from uh, your glasses, but maybe also from the microscopes that you have been using. Um, but Zeiss is a company uh, which is uh, active in basically all aspects uh, of optics and photonics. And we are very happy that uh, Zeiss has been interacting with us over the last uh, 15 years. And um, it's indeed like that, that the former CEO, Michael Kaschke, uh, is uh, now the head of the supervisory board uh, of KRT, and he also has, uh, over all the years, uh, been giving lectures uh, for the KSOP students. Uh, with that, I would like uh, to move to the next slide. Uh, just uh, a couple of people who have uh, studied at KIT, um, jumping through the centuries here. Um, when it comes uh, to the origin of optics and photonics, uh, probably uh, for all of us, what comes into our mind is uh, that uh, optics uh, relies on wave optics and that um, uh, optics is basically dominated by electromagnetic waves. And indeed, Karlsruhe is a place where the electromagnetic waves were discovered. This is where Heinrich Hertz showed that you could propagate an electromagnetic wave uh, through a lecture hall or through, an, uh, through a laboratory uh, here, uh, actually not that far away from my current office here, something like 100 meters, and you still can see uh, the historic uh, equipment there. There are other people who have uh, changed um, the the industry landscape over the last years uh, you might have seen Dieter Zetsche who has been the CEO of Daimler and, uh, and there is a nice uh, other uh, direct relation of this company to KIT and that is that uh, Carl Benz uh, was a graduate uh, of KIT at the time when the Polytechnical University, Polytechnical High School, probably was it called at that time in the 19th century. Uh, the predecessor of uh, KIT was active in, especially specialized on the engineering education uh, in southern Germany. Uh, and there are uh, other people uh, that are listed here. Alexander Gerst uh, just has been uh, uh, for quite some time uh, in the ISS, uh, International Space uh, Station, uh, is a graduate of uh, KIT. Uh, the former CEO of Robert Bosch is a graduate of KIT. Um, quite a bit of uh, the international department is tied to 
uh, Hans-Werner Hector, who is a co-founder of SAP, um, uh, a uh, research um, planning and uh, entrepreneur, research planning uh, software company, one of the biggest in the world. Uh, and he has uh, been a sponsor of uh, the international department for quite some time. Uh, Michael Kaschke, I already mentioned, um, he just uh, retired from his job as CEO of Zeiss uh, and now is uh, head of the supervisory board. And the only person that I have not discussed uh, so far is um, one female for whom we are particularly uh, proud. And this is Isabel Staude, who is uh, one of our former PhD students who recently became a full professor at the University of Jena. Uh, when it comes to a more rational um, ranking uh, of KIT, and, and maybe I, I should start with, um, with, with my judgment of rankings uh, as a whole, uh, you might have realized that German universities typically have a hard time uh, in those international rankings uh, to be very high up in the rankings um, for reasons I still do not fully understand. Um, uh, some of them have to do uh, with ratios uh, this, uh, which are calculated. Nevertheless, um, I think uh, we are proud that KIT is uh, typically ranked among the top 50 in the world. It's typically ranked among uh, the uh, top three engineering uh, universities uh, in Germany. And um, when it comes uh, to aspects like employability, uh, how is it uh, when you have graduated at KIT in terms of job, job prospects, uh, you see that we are in the absolute uh, top league uh, in the world. What is, what is KIT? Give me a second here that I can close my window because it's getting too noisy. Back again. Okay, now switching to Karlsruhe School of Optics and Photonics. Um, our, the, the, in general, the idea of a graduate school is not something that is uh, well established uh, since decades in, in Germany, but it basically started uh, with the introduction or, of the competition of the Excellence Initiative, something like uh, 15 years ago. And indeed, uh, we participated in that uh, competition in 2005, and we were awarded money and the status of a graduate school within the academic uh, excellence initiatives that the German government uh, had started in that time. Uh, we had another evaluation after six years, and this was in uh, 2012, and we are actually looking forward uh, to another evaluation next week or in, in, in two weeks. Uh, and uh, we are very positive uh, that uh, we will continue with our elite status, excellent status, a special status in the German academic system. The idea uh, of our graduate school from the very beginning is as vivid uh, as it is today. And that is that optics and photonics uh, is a multidisciplinary field that is not nicely covered by the conventional disciplines that you typically find in the academic system. Uh, so optics and photonics uh, needs interaction with physics. Um, when it comes to materials, you need interaction with uh, chemistry. There is a lot of optics and photonics in biology in the life sciences. There is a lot of uh, electrical engineering that is needed for optics and photonics, but optics and photonics is needed for electrical engineering and information technology vice versa in the sense uh, that, for example, optical communication is uh, one of the uh, fastest growing uh, branches uh, of optics and photonics. And when it comes to mechanical engineering, it's especially the manufacturing, the metrology, the automation uh, aspects um, where optics and photonics is uh, playing a very important role. In general, KSOP aims at a graduate education that is excellent. We have from the very beginning developed a system where you undergo a multidisciplinary uh, training. Uh, we have from the very beginning 
put our focus um, both on the education as well as on the research. Uh, I will ha discuss a little bit more uh, on the interplay of um, the, our conventional education programs uh, and the research. And of course, one aspect of an international graduate school that is fully uh, done in English. So all our courses are English taught is uh, that uh, we wanted uh, to achieve international visibility of research and teaching and that indeed uh, worked out. This uh, gives a little bit of the structure of our graduate school. Our graduate school is indeed organized uh, like an Anglo-Saxonian, US, British, Australian uh, graduate school in the sense that it comprises a master program. But in the German system, you typically would do indeed a master's degree before you enter into the PhD program. So we are typically recruiting uh, on two levels here, and the one is uh, that we are recruiting bachelors, graduates uh, from all over the world to enter our master program. And we are also recruiting, and this is the main reason for having the webinar today, we are recruiting master's graduates uh, from all over the world to enter our PhD program. Uh, we have a, a nice collaboration on the European level, and this is with our partner institutions, especially in Barcelona and Marseille. And this is the Erasmus Mundus program, Europhotonics, uh, which is a program that is um, nicely interlinked uh, with our master's program. And you basically see the idea here. Uh, we have currently about um, 80 PhD students. And that means uh, if you have, uh, if you just take a, uh, a graduation period or a PhD period of uh, four years, that means uh, we typically would hire 20 PhD students into our graduate school uh, per year. And uh, these uh, 20 PhD students, doctoral researchers, are uh, recruited from these uh, different channels here. A little bit more on, on the research content. What is actually going on? I do not really have uh, the time to go into all the details, but, but you see here the general idea uh, of the research that we are doing. Uh, our uh, structure, our research is structured into five uh, research areas uh, that you can see here. And that um, spans all the way from materials to systems, so photonic materials and devices, quantum optics and spectroscopy, biomedical photonics, uh, and then optical systems. And then in 2012, uh, we actually initiated, uh, because of the rising importance of renewable energies, we initiated a dedicated research area five, and that is entitled uh, solar energy. You see a couple of buzzwords here, what is going on. Uh, in those different research areas. Uh, these are just um, buzzwords for the different uh, projects, uh, just um, to mention one for each uh, of um, those research areas. There is a lot going on uh, in terms of metamaterials in research area one. And this um, not only applies to the uh, special properties of metamaterials, but also to the processing and the fabrication of those metamaterials where you have to design materials on the sub 100 nanometer uh, resolution level. Uh, in quantum optics and spectroscopy, uh, we do a lot of work on uh, single quantum emitters uh, in cavities uh, connected to waveguides. Uh, we uh, have um, spectroscopy that is uh, ranging from uh, femtoseconds uh, to very high intensities uh, to um, exotic wavelengths, etc. Uh, we have uh, remote sensing activities in, in the research area. So this is more oriented to also oriented uh, A towards quantum optics and B uh, towards developing uh, instrumentation. Uh, biomedical photonics is uh, obvious uh, that biology, life sciences in general are driven by the progress in optics and photonics. And uh, we have several groups uh, who contribute very actively to the development of super resolution microscopy. So microscopic methods um, that allow uh, to take images uh, which have a resolution which is beyond uh, the Abbey limit. Uh, optical systems, uh, there are basically two strong branches. Uh, one is on optical communication systems and the other one is on optical sensor systems, uh, digital imaging, image uh, processing uh, for autonomous vehicles. 
Uh, and um, I would say the strongest activity that we have uh, in solar energy is currently on perovskite solar cells, uh, which um, might especially be important uh, in the future of photovoltaics as tandem solar cells in the combination uh, with silicon. A couple of uh, pictures here from the laboratories or from the different uh, experiments I already uh, mentioned. Uh, One very nice example here from uh, Martin Wegner's group. Uh, this is an example here uh, where th 3D laser printing uh, has been used uh, to establish uh, integrated photonic systems. Uh, this is from the group of uh, Christian Kost. Uh, and he actually uh, used a similar system uh, to come up uh, with a world record uh, resolution uh, when uh, bringing these integrated uh, photonics uh, into a LiDAR system. Uh, we are doing biomedical photonics a lot, not only on the microscopy side, uh, but also on developing lab-on-chip systems uh, in the sense uh, that we try to integrate optical spectroscopy, optical analysis uh, into chips uh, that can be used as point-of-care diagnostic tools uh, to uh, discover rapidly uh, diseases, uh, for example. And then, as already mentioned, autonomous driving is a hot topic, uh, is a hot topic uh, in the German industry. I uh, already talked about the Daimler and Porsche, but there is also Volkswagen and BMW. So there are good reasons um, uh, that, uh, that research institutions in Germany deal with uh, algorithms, uh, with optical systems uh, that support autonomous driving. And there is a lot of uh, camera technology, LiDAR technology, optical sensing technology that is contributing uh, to this. And last but not least, this is from my own group here. Uh, this is a large area, mechanically flexible uh, organic solar cell uh, that uh, we have developed and uh, where we uh, look quite a bit on uh, printing processes and uh, low cost processes uh, to realize high efficiency solar cells. We currently have in our PhD program about 80 doctoral researchers, uh, 80 PhD students, and you see, I don't know whether you can recognize them, uh, but uh, you see that uh, they come from uh, basically all over the world. Uh, and uh, it has been a pleasure to interact uh, with these uh, very talented young people over the last years. A little bit more on the details uh, for uh, of our PhD program. Um, of course, as a doctoral researcher, as a PhD student, you should be focused on your research project. This uh, decides, uh, or the, the quality of your work decides uh, whether this is going to be a success or not. But what the graduate school can do is to offer an environment where you are optimally uh, supported. And um, that means uh, we have a supervision and mentoring system that is uh, quite uh, elaborated, where we uh, take care of um, the quality management in order to ensure uh, that you do a progress. Uh, we have developed a networking system that is quite elaborated uh, where, we, where we support uh, the uh, contacts uh, to other PhD researchers especially. So these are, for example, PhD seminars. Uh, these are training measures uh, that we offer. These are summer schools. And I have a little bit more on that uh, later. Um, in the sense uh, that uh, you learn from the interaction with your peers. There are many, many problems uh, that you will not be able to solve on your own, but uh, which can be easily solved um, if you talk to your peers. And, and this is why I'm personally very much convinced uh, that networking is a key issue uh, for success uh, because this allows you to solve problems uh, that appear much faster than just doing everything on your own. And then it comes to the competencies um, where we have um, and quite elaborated systems uh, system. Uh, we deal with your technical competencies, uh, and that especially applies in the beginning of your PhD stage. 
Uh, these are, for example, hands-on training courses, um, for example, on programming, on optical design uh, software that could be a training uh, in, in a clean room uh, in order to be able to fabricate devices, uh, etc. Uh, I have a little bit more on the management uh, issue uh, on the next uh, slide. Uh, just um, as a reminder, the typical uh, duration of a PhD is something like three to four years uh, in the German system. So we are always promising that we do everything that you can make it uh, within three years. Uh, we are okay successful with that, I would say. Uh, Miriam, maybe, or Denisa, maybe you can help me. Uh, I guess uh, our average um, uh, PhD finishing time is on the order of uh, three and a half year or something. Uh, but that, of course, uh, needs um, a nice uh, planning. And also, you need to have the results uh, such that you can... Uh, write your thesis. Now a little bit more on the on the management uh, aspect. When we started with with KSOP, uh, we thought about what is really missing in the German doctoral researcher training system. And, 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 and that was uh, one result in 2005. And I think it's uh, similarly true today and that is that a typical phd student who is just disappearing in the laboratory uh, for three or four years is not naturally a leader but on the other hand if you go to academia afterwards or if you go into industry afterwards you are expected to be a leader you are expected uh, that you can deal with uh, human resource issues uh, that you can supervise uh, engineers and technicians on the one hand, and on the other hand, you're also expected uh, that you can deal with the management aspects, with the financial aspects, uh, that you can do uh, business planning, that you know what a balance sheet is, etc. And that is uh, why we have developed uh, our management modules and why we, we actually have developed uh, the system uh, that we call uh, MBA Fundamentals Program, uh, which is an optional version. Not everybody is expected uh, to do this, uh, but uh, we believe that this is a particularly successful track uh, within our graduate school. And uh, that is uh, that you do an, a, a fundamental, so core program of an MBA in parallel to the research work uh, that you do. And this, once again, gives you here a list uh, of the management modules uh, but also the technical modules uh, that uh, I have mentioned. And then, of course, there is the aspect of scientific communication, scientific interaction, the so-called scientific modules. And uh, that means that uh, we expect, of course, every doctoral researcher that he actively presents his or her results on international conferences, uh, that uh, you would participate on symposia, that you contribute to workshops, etc. And then, of course, uh, that you also participate in the networking events uh, that KSOP itself is organizing and offering. Uh, the MBA Fundamentals Program, uh, one more time, this is now going a little bit more into the details uh, of the management modules that you can see here. Um, you see here that we are covering uh, quite a number of um, essential elements uh, of a career uh, in, let's say, management positions close to technology and you basically need to learn uh, the language uh, of finances and you need to learn the languages uh, the language of uh, project and personal uh, management in order to be uh, successful and that is something uh, that is uh, offered in this MBA fundamentals program there is one aspect uh, that we also consider to be particularly successful um, in case of, and this is the mentoring concept. Uh, you, of course, you have a boss, you have a group leader uh, with whom you are interacting and uh, who is supervising you in your period as a doctoral researcher. Uh, and you also have a second supervisor, so you would uh, typically be officially supervised by uh, two professors, uh, one who is uh, your direct boss. But then there might be other aspects uh, that are important for you. This is um, the networking I already mentioned, but that could also be 
uh, that there are some issues, that there are problems, um, that uh, you want to talk um, somebody to somebody about who is not your direct supervisor. Uh, and this is uh, the job that our mentors uh, are offering. Dana Kumka, Martin Lauer, Franco Witt are doing a great job um, in the sense uh, that they mandatorily talk twice per year uh, to all the PhD students. Uh, and this is something that um, that is an aspect of uh, supervision that we are offering, uh, which is uh, quite of quite unique, I would say, and um, which helped a lot um, to the success of KSOP. And um, our mentors are also organizing a part of the networking activities uh, that KSOP has. Coming to the networking, kind of strange time uh, to talk about uh, networking as uh, we are all doing uh, either home office or not uh, participating in any personal meetings, uh, just sitting uh, in front of our cameras and uh, sitting in front of our computers. Let's hope that this time is over at uh, some point in the near future. Um, we are offering summer schools and actually also offering a summer school uh, this year, which will, of course, be an online summer school. And there might be options also for you to participate. Uh, we have the Karlsruhe Days of Optics and Photonics. So they basically alternate from one year to the other. Uh, this one is really an in-depth uh, scientific event uh, where we invite um, scientists uh, from all over the world uh, to discuss with you the cultural days of optics and photonics is a little bit more uh, targeting uh, towards uh, industry um, in the sense that you also um, discuss with uh, potential employers uh, uh, during that event there are the phd seminars which are organized uh, by our mentors uh, there's a plenary meeting in times of uh, no corona there is also a summer barbecue which had to be cancelled this year i'm looking forward to the one in, in 2021 uh, and um, we also offer continuously excursions um, visits uh, to the different um, companies uh, with whom we are interacting and uh, once again uh, bosch size and politic uh, mentioned here as those companies who are direct uh, sponsors of ksop and to help us uh, to get our training measures uh, financed, for example. Let me just uh, share with you some individual careers uh, of uh, KSOP graduates. And um, maybe I start with Radwan. Radwan Udzidik uh, came from Bangladesh uh, to uh, KSOP uh, to do his um, master's and he actually came over the Europhotonics program. So this program that we are running together with Marseille and Barcelona, uh, then uh, did his uh, master's thesis here and also did his uh, PhD uh, uh, actually in, in my group in, in 2016. And uh, it was really a pleasure uh, to see his enthusiasm and uh, we, he really did a good, good job um, to establish uh, the field of um, biomimetic photonics uh, here at KIT. And uh, he meanwhile uh, is doing a postdoc uh, at Caltech and he is also collaborating with uh, Samsung USA, USA. I don't know, he probably might even have two jobs currently. We are still collaborating with him and it's really a pleasure um, to see how his uh, career uh, is developing. I should also mention maybe Elena Christina, who was with us as a, a master student. Um, this um, is probably not in the focus of what we are discussing today, but uh, it's just to point out that the master's program or a master's uh, certificate from KIT um, opens also many doors. And of course, uh, we are very, very happy if uh, the very best master students then in the end um, stay in Karlsruhe, but uh, some of them, of course, uh, move for further to other places. And Elena uh, Christina uh, went uh, to ETH Zurich and is now at Harvard University and was recently awarded um, this prestigious uh, EPS uh, uh, prize uh, that you see mentioned here. Maybe a li little bit more uh, likely in terms um, of a career path uh, 
is uh, the way that you uh, go to industry after PhD graduation. And, and maybe I should also mention this a little bit more general here. Um, the German academic system is a very, very competitive one in the sense that the number of uh, professors is rather limited. It's, um, in, if you look at the relation between the number of professors and the number of students, um, the German system is very hierarchic and, and, and this ratio is uh, rather low if you compare it, uh, for example, to the US, uh, to the UK or uh, to other uh, countries. And that means uh, most of our graduates, uh, PhD graduates, will go to industry. And it's not the classical career that you move uh, along in the academic system, but the classical career would be that you go in industry. And coming from an engineering uh, department, um, it's uh, even like that, that most of our professors in our department have been to industry before. So even if you in the long term consider to go for an academic career, it might be interesting to join one or the other uh, German or international company uh, after your PhD. And these are just two gentlemen who have been graduating uh, from KSOP uh, over the time. Uh, Matthias Wissert was actually with me here uh, at the Light Technology Institute. Um, uh, he actually joined a consulting company after KSOP graduation. He did his PhD on plasmonics and was really a pioneer of uh, many of the plasmonics activities that we are doing. Uh, and then uh, later joined Trumpf. Trumpf is the biggest German laser systems uh, manufacturer. A world uh, leader when it comes to materials processing, especially metal processing uh, with laser systems. And it's kind of interesting to see that um, Johannes Kaschke, who is a graduate from 2015, is now working uh, in his uh, department here uh, as a group leader. So in that sense, uh, there are many industrial leaders or KSOP is generating more and more industrial leaders, uh, which are continuously doing their career in the optics and photonics industry. A little bit more statistically, uh, when you look uh, at what do our PhD alumni do, uh, you see the statistics uh, here. Uh, you see that the number one employer of our PhD graduates is Bosch company. Uh, number two is size, um, and that makes a whole lot of sense. Bosch is very likely not known as a typical optics and photonics company, but Bosch as an automotive company is very much relying on developing camera systems, optical sensor systems, head-up displays, um, uh, lighting systems uh, for the car industry. And in that sense, there are good reasons um, that uh, people go to Bosch afterwards. And Bosch, by the way, is also maybe the number one employer for technology uh, people. So if, um, if you really like uh, to deposit thin films, if you like to do lithography, if you like to fabricate um, nanotechnological microsystem devices, Bosch is a very good employer as they are world leading in MEMS and uh, as they are also now ramping up their automotive electronics activities. Nanoscribe is a startup um, company here from KRT. A world leader in direct laser writing, so basically three-dimensional printing, um, and uh, you see here all the other companies. Uh, you also see here that many of uh, the um, more than 200 graduates uh, that we have work in companies um, which are typically not famous uh, for uh, optics and uh, photonics, but they are spread all over uh, the whole industry. Okay, so this uh, shows you that there is a broad range of employers uh, for the graduates. Uh, and of course, uh, we are proud uh, of our former KSOP members. I already mentioned Isabel Staudel before, uh, who did uh, their career uh, in academia, uh, several professors who came out of uh, KSOP. 
couple of more slides uh, on what we are directly planning now for this year, uh, the summer school. Uh, register now so this uh, will be an online summer school in in early september um the we, we are very happy that we have uh, once again a very nice mixture of um, industry people application oriented scientists uh, fundamental scientists uh, and we actually have a special format uh, where we mix uh, overview talks uh, with uh, so-called master classes uh, where then in a, in, a, in a second talk or in a second discussion, uh, the speakers will interact more in depth with uh, the PhD students and the participants. Uh, we have Oscar, and I'm very happy that we have Oscar. Oscar is uh, driving many activities. Oscar is a student chapter of um, Optical Society OSA and uh, SBIE. Uh, they are organizing quite a number of events and they are also are an essential element of the networking uh, that we have among the optics and photonics uh, student in Karlsruhe. With that, I would like to finish. These are a couple of impressions uh, from, well, not all from Karlsruhe. Uh, this is all Karlsruhe. This is our, our formula team. Uh, this is uh, certainly not Karlsruhe, these are the Alps Mountain, I suppose. Uh, this is an open air concert. Uh, so there are different, uh, various uh, different uh, fascinating aspects also of um, the non professional life uh, in Karlsruhe. There is a lot to do uh, in our city, and it would be great uh, to interact with you in your. Uh, application process um, in the near future. And with this, I would like uh, to point out um, that we are currently placing our job openings on our homepage. So in case uh, you are willing to apply for a PhD position, look at the homepage uh, of KSOP, look at the different jobs which are offered there, the openings. But also, um, if you don't find directly the topic that you like, uh, just uh, place your application for KSOP as a whole and indicate in which area you would like to work uh, on your PhD uh, topic. Uh, this is a little bit more here on uh, the, the documents that you need. And I guess um, there is also time uh, for some questions uh, soon. Uh, maybe a little bit on the money. Um, we have uh, scholarships available, um, but uh, typically you would uh, also then sooner or later uh, become an employee of KIT once you are hired. And that means uh, that your, in general, your, your net salary will probably somewhere be between uh, this amount here and something like uh, 2,000 uh, or a little bit more than 2,000 euro per month. Having that said, I have an overview of our team, which is uh, supporting you on all aspects. And uh, with that, uh, probably uh, we should open here for some questions. And I'm also showing you uh, the address uh, where you uh, can reach us via mail. With that, I guess I would like to finish here. I don't know, Miriam, Denisa, do you want? Uh, do you have uh, something you want to share, talking to us, or do we rely on the questions uh, that might pop up in the chat? Okay, if this, and then maybe. I I take uh, some of Can the you questions. Can hear me, um, Uli? Ah, yeah. Hi, um, I'm, hi everybody. My name is Mary Rose. I'm part of the marketing team here with KSOP. Thank you all for joining. Um, we do, I do see that there are some questions mm -hmm. um, that you guys have asked in the chat box. Um, maybe if Uli, you can um, kind of go through and read some yeah. of the questions aloud. Um, so that everybody sees kind of what the question is and then give them 
a nice answer. That would be very great. Okay, in case I can I can give the answer. So okay, let me start yeah, here. <laughs> How long does the application period usually take? Uh, for this spe this specific uh, event uh, is uh, supposed to motivate you to apply very soon because uh, we have a round of recruiting at the end of the month. So I guess uh, if you're interested in joining already in fall this year or within the next six months or so, uh, you better have your documents uh, ready to go as soon as possible and send them to us. Accommodation for a PhD student, uh, I guess um, uh, this is uh, the next question here. Uh, so the, the exact question was, how long does the application period usually take? So this particular application now is something that only takes four weeks. Um, okay, uh, accommodation is something that we try to help you, uh, but this is not something uh, that we regularly do. So we suppose that you have some money and that you can survive on the free uh, market uh, for apartments uh, in Karlsruhe. Okay, uh, there is a question. Um, you are in the last semester of the master program. Uh, can I apply, apply now? Indeed, you can always apply uh, when, you're not, when you have not yet uh, finished. Uh, but of course, uh, you need to, to make sure that uh, you bring your master certificate once you register here. Uh, English proficiency, I don't think that this is necessary for the PhD program, uh, but uh, as you will be interviewed by professors, uh, so you better are fluent in English, uh, otherwise this will be, of course, one criterion uh, that uh, would uh, bring you into problems. Do we, have to, uh, ha do we have to have an offer from a KIT professor before applying uh, to the PhD program? Uh, both or first we apply to case of and after getting selected, we approach a professor. You can do both. Um, so this is, uh, I mean, th this is open. What we are doing here is basically open for both routes uh, towards a PhD position. You can contact a professor directly, um, but uh, be aware that uh, we are receiving basically applications every day. So it might be like that, uh, that uh, the professor is not responding and that it nevertheless helps a lot if you are really good and if you have good um, grades uh, in your master certificate that you apply to KSOP as a whole or that you apply to some of uh, those jobs which are currently offered, and then you will be brought into contact with the respective professor. How long will you allow application? Uh, we can, uh, we basically allow continuously that you apply, but we have special events um, in order to support the matchmaking. Um, Maybe I go back here. There was one question that I missed. Uh, can PhD student take more than three modules that you have mentioned on slide 14? Uh, this is probably the management um, program that we're offering, the MBA fundamentals program. In, indeed, uh, you can take up to seven of those modules, but uh, it has to, um, you, you, we, we need together to find uh, the, the funding for this. And that's, that could be, for example, a fellowship and that uh, that uh, KSOP is offering you or that one of the industrial partners is offering to us. Okay. Um, my, I can, Okay, ultra fast, ultra short laser signs, um, chip based photonics. Um, yes, indeed. Um, we are probably not the biggest center for ultra fast and ultra short laser sciences, um, but there are many femtosecond and picosecond lasers, especially femtosecond lasers. Um, uh, all over the campus, uh, so there is a lot to do for people who do time resolved spectroscopy. Even if I take my own laboratory here, um, we have uh, something like uh, five femtosecond lasers uh, that we do. So we do not declare that we are fully focused on ultra fast spectroscopy, 
but we use femtosecond lasers um, for spectroscopy, for doing plasmonics, for doing materials processing, for looking at quantum optics, uh, etc. Okay, uh, there is a question whether you can update uh, your application. That certainly makes sense. Uh, so if you have new information, if you have more grades, uh, better grades, um, go ahead and upgrade uh, your application and resubmit it um, to us soon. Can you share a link uh, where we can apply? Uh, yes, we can share this. This is a um, case of PhD portal um, that uh, can be sent around. Can you hear me? Ah, I can hear. Who was that, Denisa? That was Denisa. Um, hi, Mary Rose again. I'll put in the chat the yeah. link for you guys. Okay. So great. that you can um, apply. Okay. Any further questions? I know that there were some questions. If um, Uli, if you wouldn't mind to scroll up a little bit, that um, uh, there were some from earlier, also that maybe weren't answered yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, or if yeah, people, okay. if your question weren't answered, then um, if you want to re-add the question. Yeah, I apologize. I was not fast enough. So maybe I, we take the last one here for PhD and for summer schools as well. What is this? Um, da, da, da. Okay, this is uh, the link for the summer school, of course, we should share. Um, my master thesis is based on optical fiber sensors. Um, yeah, well, okay, this is uh, whether you should, of course, it helps um, if you have done a topic uh, that is close to the PhD topic in your master thesis, but that is not mandatorily the, the, the case. I think it's more important that uh, your application convinces in terms of your talents and your intellectual abilities. And, and overall, of course, it helps if you have good grades and if you have good letters of recommendation. And if you have already, for example, published a paper, and if you see that uh, you have been a first author in a paper, that of course uh, is, is a strong reason that uh, we could uh, see you as a, uh, as, an, as a researcher in KSOP. Okay, uh, there is a question on uh, somebody who has done high energy physics, uh, whether he could uh, move into quantum information processing. In general, I would say yes. I, I think it's pretty much the same answer as my last one. If uh, you can convince us uh, that you are really good, it's more about the talents and not that much um, specifically about uh, the PhD or the master's work uh, that you did. I'm a master student of optics in, in Germany. Can I apply for a master thesis in KSOP uh, and after that apply for PhD? Uh, of course, you can do this, um, but this is something where you have uh, to contact um, the individual professor for the master thesis because that has to be arranged with your local university. I assume that this is not uh, KIT where you currently are. Uh, Nonlinear optics and photonics is something that we do a lot. Uh, but um, there is no specific department for this. So I would say nonlinear optics and photonics uh, is done in pretty much all the research areas uh, that we are doing. Uh, is it possible to get KSOP scholarship uh, if I choose professor which has affiliation with Institute of uh, KIT? Well, in general, yes, of course, this is the idea. I'm not uh, sure whether I get the question uh, uh, right. Um, there are also once in a while um, we are facing the situation that somebody is doing an optics and photonics PhD thesis uh, with a professor, but not uh, a professor who is participating in KSOP. So this is, but this is something we um, we need uh, to discuss. Okay, is there a minimum grade to be accepted for PhD? Uh, this is not the case, but of course, in general, it helps um, the better you are, the higher the probability. Um, 
can you apply for multiple PhD programs at KSOP? Um, yes, you sh if, if you, for example, consider three projects with uh, different priorities, you should indicate this such that um, we see that you are interested uh, also in different research groups. So that uh, certainly makes sense. Uh, how this is done in detail, I'm not sure whether we have already uh, discuss this because we are uh, currently setting up also the procedure for the matchmaking. I mean, at some point um, uh, you need to be uh, to come into contact uh, with the different professors. Uh, being an international student, can I get scholarship uh, opportunities? Uh, of course. I mean, our scholarship uh, do not distinguish between national, international, Chinese, US, uh, Pakistan. There is no difference. We just give our scholarship in terms of uh, academic potential and uh, in, in terms of the quality of the PhD students. Okay, I don't know, there might have been a couple of more questions uh, further up here, uh, which I missed. Uh, I already had this English proficiency we discussed. Uh, okay, funding options for PhD at KSOP, uh, maybe a little bit more specifically on this one here. Um, so we have a mixture. So uh, we have scholarships. Uh, we have on the order of uh, 15 scholarships available for those 80 students that we have. Uh, having that said, uh, that means uh, that uh, the other money has to come from other resources. And these are the resources that the different research groups uh, can offer. Basically, all our professors are strong in acquiring a third party funding and uh, then they would potentially fund you uh, with uh, the project money, the project uh, budgets uh, that they have available. Okay, uh, then in electronics, uh, yep, that all, this is more specific. Uh, these are maybe questions um, that you also can uh, figure out with a case of office. Okay. Um, can do this here. Is one or more paper publication required? It's not really required, but of course it helps. If uh, we, if you convince us that you are the best student of um, of a university, uh, that also. Uh, could compensate for not having published something. And to be honest, even for our own students, um, our own master students, uh, because we only have a master thesis of uh, six months, many of them graduate uh, with a master's degree. With a first author paper publication, it's something that needs time. So in that sense, we are looking at uh, the whole picture when looking at those applications. It's, uh, of course, not only one aspect. It's not only uh, publication. It's not only letter of recommendation. It's not only uh, the grades. It's the overall impression that we get from your uh, application. Uh, do we have to submit a soft copy? Uh, this is an interesting one, uh, probably Miriam. Uh, Denisa, you have to help me uh, for the for the details of the letters of recommendations. Uh, in general, I would say, uh, yeah, uh, both is possible. You can upload them to the application portal, or uh, the people who are writing them they can send them to us via email. Okay. Okay, I, uh, maybe I stress this publication issue too much. Uh, there is another question here, uh, as, as um, I already said. Uh, we look at the overall picture. It's not one, one specific uh, criterion that is uh, super important. It's uh, grades, letters of recommendation, publications. Uh, it's a university, it's a research group, uh, it's uh, your motivation. And we are looking at uh, at your whole at 
uh, as at your application as a whole. How about um, hi Uli? This is Mary Rose again. Um, I think we have time for just a few more questions. So if yes. people want to um, type in their questions, and if your questions then aren't able to be answered, feel free to email this e the info KSOP email address, and we will gladly, as soon as possible, get back to you with the answers to your questions. But um, only how about just um, five more questions, um, and then okay. we can. Wrap it up. Fine, fine, fine with me. I'm anyhow missing my next appointment here, Colonel, already, right? <laughs> uh, Uli, yeah. I would like to add something too um, for the applicants for the current openings uh, which are published on our homepage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have a deadline to apply until July 19th okay. because at the end of the month we would like uh, to be able to decide on your application. In general, you can apply at any time, but just for the offered openings, there will be a deadline now. Just okay. to know this. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, what are the selection criteria? Okay, this, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, we, we have these different criteria and, and you sh there, there is no system that I can give you. It's uh, these are decisions which are made by humans, and uh, this is not a, not a machine which is decided. Uh, are there any funding available for the MSc program? Uh, in general, yes. Uh, there is both uh, fellowships for the Europhotonics program as well as for uh, the case of uh, masters program. Uh, so in that sense, uh, if you're interested in the master's program, there are special events also for that, and there are also scholarships. Is there any interview? Um, uh, indeed. So um, we this uh, the procedure that we are foreseeing now uh, for for this month is some is one where the deadline that was already mentioned is uh, July 19th. And then afterwards, we look at the applications. And then uh, for those uh, who are selected, there will be interviews uh, then at the end of uh, July. July 19th deadline is to apply for a PhD for the summer school. To be honest, I don't know. Yep. Yes. For the summer school? There is no okay. deadline for the summer school. Yeah, it's July 31st. Uh, July 31st, yeah. Okay. Do we need to apply for admission separately and for funding separately? No, there is. Um, we actually do not really support the idea that you that you are applied uh, without funding, uh, that you are admitted without funding. So we we know that uh, you have to cover your cost of living here, and um, I also find it uh, somehow inappropriate if you do research in a research group and you are not getting money. Uh, so in that sense, uh, all the doctoral researchers that we have, they receive a regular salary and that is either a scholarship or a real salary as an employee of KIT. Uh, and, and the uh, admission is basically uh, done together. Once you are admitted and you have an agreement uh, with a professor, they are, he is basically, he or she is responsible then that there will be funding. Okay, I think uh, that um, is great. Thank you so much, Oli. Um, and we really appreciate all the questions. And um, like I mentioned earlier, if you have more questions, feel free to contact us. And we're excited for your applications. Okay, thanks a lot to you, Mary Rose, for making that possible and for the perfect organization. First time for me and Edu Dip. <laughs> thank you, Oli, for taking the time. <laughs> really appreciate it. All right, so thank you all and hope to see some of you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.